what are we gonna do with minimal equipment with this plastic space blanket line and some sticks? Well, I'm gonna show you how to survive in the middle of winter with minimal equipment. Thanks for watching Survival Schoolhouse. Well, welcome to my office. So make sure you have all your materials ready. Make sure you have your sticks, your plastic, everything that you need. Make sure you're in a safe site to have a shelter. You want to be far, and away, far enough away from trees that are dead. You want it to be flat and level. So it's going to be comfortable to sleep in. Those are a couple of some of the big things, but there's going to be another video on shelter site selection with all the differences that you need to think about whether you're camping on your own, whether you're hunting in the back country, whatever it may be. But in this video, we're gonna talk about a shelter right here. Why would you wanna know a shelter like this? This shelter is based off Morris Kohansky's super shelter, and it's a dome shelter. You're basically putting yourself in an insulated bubble, and that bubble traps that heat inside. So it's not an open face shelter. You're gonna be enclosed by the plastic and you have the space blanket inside. So you could keep this equipment, this plastic and space blanket in your vehicle. You can keep it in your pack for an emergency. Then from there, you know if anything happens, you'll be able to stay alive for the night. So let's get started. First thing that you wanna look at is how big are my materials in the first place? What am I even gonna make? Don't just run around and try and start making a shelter. Start tying things up to trees, grabbing sticks, and without even knowing what you're doing. So inventory your materials, and then go from there and decide what type of shelter that you want to make. I'm going to stomp this area out, start getting the framework going, and we will meet you on the flip side. First, get your bed ready. So figure out how long you want to make your bed. I'm going to make it elevated up off the ground. I'm going to use a couple logs. I'm going to put some sticks across here. So we know that's how big we can make it. And you can also level these out, you know, to be able to make it more comfortable to sleep on. And that elevation gets you up off the ground. And then heat can come underneath from the fire and heat you up from the bottom as well. So it's an insulation bed and heat conductor all in one. Now in this spot right here, this site, yeah, we're in the open on a ridge line, so it's not ideal for wind, but you can take advantage of the sun. So, but the main reason I'm doing it here is because it's a nice spot. So that's just another consideration you want to think of. Then I'm going to put my sticks in, make an arch, and then put my bedding down. Well, we are trying to get rescued, you know, throw up your space blanket as a flag. Sitting there, it's going to reflect an amazing signal. You can see. So the knot I'm tying here is the Canadian jam knot. Put an overhand knot, put another knot right underneath it, but leave it loose. Then wrap. Your whole line around your sticks and back through your loose knot. So bring it back through, tighten it up slightly, get your sticks positioned, then you can move the line back and forth and it tightens up and stays securely. 
Then you can even tie another overhand knot right next to the base of where it tightened up. That'll keep her from slipping out. Save a lot of line that way. But it is not easy to untie. Now the really cool concept about this shelter is the space blanket. That goes on there to reflect the heat back down onto you. Put this on over the framework. Be careful with mylar or space blankets. They tear very easy. And once they start to tear, they don't want to stop like a potato chip bag. Lovich. Space blanket is on, time for the plastic. This plastic is one mil plastic drop cloth, 10 by 20 feet. I think this is big enough. I may double it over, I may cut it. What you want to do is have your shelter 90 degrees to the wind so the smoke doesn't blow right into it. 
so it doesn't blow sparks into your plastic, but you still get the heat. It is so hot in here right now. Oh, 76 degrees right now. I'm sweating bullets. It was 30 degrees out. It's a little warmer in the sun right now, so it's got to be up in the 40s. But in this bubble, it keeps all the heat in. The heat, heat coming in from the fire, reflecting off of the Mylar blanket, the space blanket on me. Oh, this would be great. A great shelter just to be able to stay alive in. But right now it's just way too hot. It's a sauna right now. I need to get out. I need to go get some water. Woo, this thing is awesome. Oh, man. <laughs> this shelter is amazing. So glad I made it. What do we learn from it? Basically, mylar blanket on the inside, reflecting heat down. Underneath the shelter, you have a raised platform which helps keep you up off the ground and then heat can come underneath. Right now, it's too hot to even sit in because it's the middle of the day. We're on a south facing slope which the sun is coming in, the fire is heating it up, it's 80 degrees inside there, can't even sit in there. So enclose the sides but still leave some ventilation in there. So this is a type of shelter to have in your kit, on your person, in your vehicle. It's easy, you just get some bendable twigs, bendable saplings, stick them in the ground, tie them together, put space blanket on it, plastic over the top, cover the front. You don't want your fire any closer than right around three feet, otherwise it may melt the plastic. So using this right now, we'll be able to keep you alive in the north woods of Minnesota. Maybe you're walking around the deer stand and you need to stay overnight. You can make yourself a little home, a little bubble, and keep the majority of your heat in. The, your body heat will keep a lot of the heat in. So you could have a fire in front of here have a big pile of wood ready to go, and then just go to sleep without a sleeping bag when it's 20 below outside. Um, you're gonna wake up every hour or two to stoke the fire and then warm back up, but that's gonna be a lot warmer than just sleeping next to a fire under a tree. So, thanks for watching Survival Schoolhouse. I really appreciate it. This was so much fun. Please like and subscribe. Ring the bell notification so you know when the next video is coming down. Let me know what you want to see. And go enjoy the great outdoors. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> about the shelter right here.